a new day, a new project. You see right here I have two power amplifier circuits and these are TDA7293. What I'm trying to do today is to have a bridge amplifier with these two chips. Here I have a board, it used to be populated with uh, 7294 and checking the application schematic for 7293. It's looking like it's very capable of being bridged, but uh, with a lot of care about the load, it shouldn't be less than 8 ohms. And uh, as I can see, two TDA7293 can be used in bridge. There are some consideration. 8 ohm for the output, uh, plus and minus 25 volts. So the maximum power, it will be a kind of 150 watts. And uh, on 60 ohms, we can even have plus and minus 40 volts and the maximum power is 200 watts. So even on 16, 16 ohms, it delivers 200 watts. Yeah, that's wonderful. The point is that I don't have a plus minus or let's call it a differential power supply, but I'll improvise something with a very simple schematic. I'm going to use just for experimenting. This is just, uh, uh, how can I say, a testing purpose two laptop power supplies let's say we have the first one that goes to mains here and here 230 volts ac and of course we got the outputs that should be plus 19 volts and another plus 19 volts to have a differential power supply we need the ground of course let's say this is the ground and we need a minus and we need a plus how can we do that oh here is the minus we're going to do that very simple we just tied minus with plus and here will be the ground and of course here i'll have minus 19 volts and plus 19 volts totally a kind of 38 volts dc well it's well beyond the capability of this chip from the characteristics they advertise on the page, the maximum very high operating voltage range, plus minus 15 volts, well, and the maximum output power 100 watts and they tom 10% uh, distortion with plus minus 40 volts. So this is well beyond, but I'll be sure that I can measure at least, let's say 50 watts or something, and we'll do the measurements at the end. The point is to find out if these guys are compatible in, uh, to use in bridge mode. So from the schematic, we know that uh, the sink, the heat sink here, or the radiator, it's connected to pin eight, and this is pin eight. That's fine. And I found out if we measure pin one with pin eight, we shouldn't have anything on the ohm meter on any scale i'm on 20 mega ohms scale that's a way to to find out if the circuit is genuine or a fake if you see my latest videos i have one about uh, the fixing a very very destroyed amplifier with 7294 and there i've been lucky enough to have four fake ICs and they just blew up in the moment when I was connecting the power uh, supply. Okay, next step. So we got the circuits here. I told you the story about the power supply. I don't know if it's working. I told you it is just experimental. A sip of coffee and let's go to work. So like I said before, this board has been used, but it's still absolutely in good shape. All I have to do is to clean the traces to try to fit the circuit in there my trusty ts100 i love this guy we should have uh, that kind of special uh, mesh you know to have all this uh, soldering out of the board i don't have that so i have to improvise something all you need is a piece of wire like this take the plastic out and we'll improvise of what we got around to do the job something like this of course Flux, where are you my dear Rosine? This kind of soldering, it's uh, melting around 300 degrees, so it shouldn't be a problem. 
And here we go. See my improvised mesh. It's working like a dream. Nice. I still have a spot here. If you remember, I said so many times, improvisation is an art. And so many times is the difference between being hired or being fired. This is just an idea how to do the things when you don't have the proper tools or equipment or parts around. Plastic out. Come on. Don't want to go out. Okay. I respect that. Just twist a little bit and let's do the other one. Flux. The holes are clear and I need to be sure about that. Let me see if I have a proper piece of wire. Yes, I have strong enough to check all the holes because we can have some flux in there and it's difficult to have the pins is okay. The single one here, voila, and now it's free. Okay, next, 72.94 and 72.93, they are very close, like schematic, and there is a single uh, difference. There is a boot strap capacitor. Uh, when the boot strap is connected between pin 6 and 14, the maximum supply voltage in the presence of an output signal is limited to 100 volts. Do the bootstrap capacitor over voltage. When the bootstrap is connected between 6 and 12, the maximum supply voltage can go to a full voltage. That means 120 volts. So in my case, I'm not doing anything about that. I just let the bootstrap going like the original. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's check the schematic. So we have a pin 6 here and a capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor connected to pin 14 and the same story here and this is fine pin 11 in our case it's in the air oh no it's pin 12 i'm sorry so it's 6 to 12 and here we have 12 on the ground okay come on you too i'm not talking about the band yes this is clean and we got one more here right okay i got all the holes free yeah oh yes can i see through them absolutely yeah. and now all i have to do is to plant the circuits the ic's you can see here it's a burning mark because the other circuit was re literally blowing boom i'm so sorry i didn't uh, record or didn't film anything about it, it was a really unpleasant surprise so this is st tda 7293 the pins looks okay i'm trying to fit them into the holes you know doing electronics you have to do it with love like the song it's saying please don't go how to put the things back here and here all of them it's in the place except this one now it's perfect. Well, really don't want this to go too far because if I need to take them out, it will be much easier if they are just a little, okay, like this, one millimeter less. Okay, time to soldier. That's nice about TS100 is going on standby mode. And when you touch it or move it a little bit, it's coming suddenly back on life let's clean a little bit i'm using this kind of sponge metallic sponge 350 degrees oh this is too much let's put it down a little bit three 357 if it's too high temperature then it's burning the flux it's boiling the flux there we go perfect number one it's okay I don't like this. Is it a bridge there? I don't think so. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, it is. Not anymore. And the track is drained, but you know something. But we can do a bridge. We can do a piece of wire from, uh, from 12 to 8 to remake the connection. Maybe it was too much temperature when I took it off because I've been using the hot air station. Very possible. 
and there we go better than factory number eight is very important because it's minus yes good next one pins here kind of yeah we'll do the same technique let's fit row number one hmm. i check the holes again see if everything is clear or well, let me have these wires out or we have to remember that for the output the plus for the loudspeaker it will be with the ic that taking the input signal in my case is this one here so this automatically will be plus i can have this that's plus for the output for the loudspeaker row number two it's done now it's time to have this in place perfecto and there we go every pin is in place soldering fine super nice now a little bit of alcohol and a toothbrush to clean a little clean the flux this is isopropylic alcohol and this is solving or dissolving the um, the flux and we'll make it nice and clean beautiful now looking great okay and the next step is to prepare the power supply <laughs> 